Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the worship. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Okay, let us just pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can lift up our voices to you and our hearts and our hands. Lord, be with us as we study your words, as we proclaim the righteousness of God in the midst of your people. Lord, be with us and give us special message and anointing. I pray, O oh God, that you will touch our hearts, that we may know you, that we may know what's your will in our lives, in our church, O oh God, in our ministry. Lord, be exalted in the midst of your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. All right. So uh, good morning once again. So we will proceed to the proclamation of the words. And last week we talked about the word of God. Today we will continue. Okay. So Psalm 148, 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Can we say that? Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. You know, in some American churches... <laughs> When somebody said, praise the Lord, the audience responded, because it is a command. So if I say, praise the Lord, people will say, praise the Lord, because it is a command. Okay, God is commanding us to praise him. All right? So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. Six, He also established them forever and ever, he made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord for the reading of his words. Amen. So last week we were talking about the word of God. We talked about the word of God is Jesus. The word of God is God. The word of God enters our hearts. Remember that? And then the word of God is remaining is residing in the hearts of the people do you know that that there is a word of god inside of you and the word of god is god who is a resident of your <laughs> heart that was wonderful and that is a mystery <clears throat> but the thing that we should learn today <clears throat> is that the word of god is imperative it is a command Okay, it is not passive, just sitting and residing inside your heart. When God sent the word of God inside of you, that word of God is active. That's why Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is alive and active. So it is active, moving inside of you. All right? So today, let's study about this and... Our goal is to know what is the meaning of this in our lives. The Word of God is just a command, and it, it, it is there inside of you. And there is a requirements from God. God is requiring us to abide and to follow this Word of God. Because the Word of God is an instruction. Do you know that in Hebrew... Okay, when we say Torah, okay, can we say that? Torah. Torah. Torah means instruction. Okay, it is not just law. Okay, it comes from the root word Yarah. Yarah means to shoot. So if you are playing basketball, okay, your goal is always to shoot. Be sure that you will be able to shoot because if you will not be able to shoot it, the ball will go to other direction and you miss it. You will miss the ball. And that ball, missing ball, represents sinfulness of human being. 
every time you play a basketball and shoot the ball in the ring, okay, it means you are able to, to, to do the direction. That is yara. Okay, every time you shoot, Brother Edgar, you are yaraing it. <laughs> All right? Yaraing. It is just like kayaking when we were make the kaya in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, so you are yara, but when you miss it, when you miss the ball, it means in Hebrew, it is chet. Can we say that? Chet. Chet means sinfulness. So every time you miss the commandment of God, you are sinning. You are sinning because you are not able to do the shooting perfectly. That is the meaning and that is the idea of Torah. That's why God gave the Torah. God gave the word of God. God sent the word of God inside of you so that you will not, be, you will, you will not miss the Yarah of God or the Torah of God. And today, let us study this, because this is a wonderful message from God today. First thing that we can learn is that God's word is God's decree. That's why I told you it is a commandment. It is, a, it is an active. It is imperative. And this word of God did not originate in, 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 on earth. It originated from heaven. Look at that. Okay, when God said, let there be light, there was light. Okay, so the word of God is a decree. So when God said, let there be light, let there be men, let, uh, let there be firmaments. Okay, so look at verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. So this time, God is commanding whom? Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. So from the top, God is commanding all the inhabitants in heaven that they should praise the Lord. Okay, so you can see, huh? The praising of God has started from the heavenlies. And if you will go to heaven tonight, who wants to go to heaven tonight? <laughs> All right? You will see angels praising the name of God. Okay? Because it is a commandment that God gave to all inhabitants of heaven. So when you go to heaven, you will see the angels praising the Lord. You will see the cherubims and seraphims praising the Lord. You will see the four living creatures in Revelation praising the Lord. You will see the 24 elders sitting at the, at the throne, around the throne of God. They are praising the Lord. All right? And this is a commandment that God gave to all inhabitants of heaven. And according to verse 6, look at verse 6. Let's uh, make it an advance. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. So in other words, this is a decree. It is a word of God. It is a Torah that has been started right there in the heavenlies. Okay, second thing. Look at the second uh, stanza. The second stanza of our... Uh, um, Zam. Three, praise him, sun and moon. So you can see the first stanza is all heavenly hosts in heaven should praise the Lord. But the second is the second lower level. What is the second lower level? Those that are in the heavenly bodies. Okay, what are those? The sun, the moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens. And you waters. Oh, there are waters above the heavens. There are waters above the clouds. What are those? The snow, the rain that are stuck there. Okay, and then someday God will send this to earth to water the earth. And God said, praise me, you there, you in, in, in heavenly host. Praise me. And this is a command of God to the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the clouds, and all the, 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 the snow. Think about that. And it is a commandment of the Lord. Okay, and then look at the third... Uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, I'm excited. <laughs> this third stanza, it is the commentary. Okay, this is the commentary of the writer and an exhortation to all inhabitants of the earth. Here on earth, okay, here on earth, listen, according to the writer. If the heavenly hosts and all inhabitants of heaven are praising God, how much more you? All right, how much more you that you should praise the Lord? In verse 5 said, let them praise the name of the Lord. Sa Tagalog, hayaan natin sila'y mag-worship kay God. Let them. Who is thus them? The sun, the moon, the cherubim, the angels, the seraphim, and all the heavenly hosts. Let them worship the Lord. And how about you people? How about you people? Do you worship the Lord or do you worship Satan? And the evil forces in this world. That is the point of the writer. And it is a command. It started from God. It is a decree. And verse 5 said, look at verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Look at 6. He also established them forever and ever, and made a decree which shall never pass away. So this praising, 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 hallelujah, it, it is a decree. It is a commandment by God, okay? But for us, it is just an expression. Praise the Lord, I have blessing today, Lord. Praise the Lord, I have new job, Lord. Praise the Lord, I have salary increase today, Lord. Without knowing that this is a commandment of God to all creatures. And I believe even the ants and all the ipis ipis there, the cockroaches, they have to worship God because they have been created by God forever Amen. and ever. Praise the Lord. Let's give glory to God. And I would like to show you this. Anybody has been in Aurora Quezon? <laughs> Anybody has been in uh, Norway, in Finland, in Scandinavian countries, Alaska, Manila, you know, in Laguna? When we were young, when we were young in Laguna, we always see this, this uh, thunders, uh, uh, lightning, lightning. Where is that lightning? We thought it is in the other, other mountain. And then later on, somebody says that it is the St. Elmo's fire. Okay, that was a direction when Magellan uh, navigating the whole world a few years ago. In 1517 or 1517. 1519. When he discovered your country. <laughs> But he started September 27, 1519, when he started to move from Spain to Leyte. Is it Leyte? And then that was the St. Elmo's fire. And that St. Elmo's fire was there thousand and thousand and thousand years ago. And until today, we can still see that El St. Elmo's fire. Why? Because it was created by God. And God said, worship me, St. Elmo's fire. If, but it was not St. Elmo's fire's name a long time ago. Okay? It was only Padre Damaso who called that. Uh, no, joke lang. So you can see, huh? you can see those stars that gives glitter and shining in our space is a commandment from God. And that gives glory to our God because God wants himself to be praised and worshipped by his creation. And it is a commandment. That's why if the word of God is inside of you now, my brother and sisters, when you enter, when you allow Jesus to enter your home, to enter your heart, and you do not want to obey the word of God, you are creating troubles in your life. You will create troubles. It is you who will create troubles in your life. Because the purpose of that word inside of you is not just to reside but to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord is not talking. Praise the Lord is service. Service. Do you know in, in Hebrew, 
Okay, when we say obed, obed is where we get the word abuda. It is work, working, working. Working is abuda. Somebody here from Jerusalem, from Israel. Some of you work in Israel. And then he said, do you have abuda? It means, do you have work? But the word obed also means worship. To have work, something that will glorify Yahweh. That is the meaning of that. Okay, that's why when you work in the kingdom of God, when I preach, when I clean this, when I make the vacuum here, when I, you are making the abuda. And you are worshiping God because it was ordained by God. Okay? So that is number one. Okay, that's not the introduction. Okay, that's our number one point that we can learn that the commandment from God, the commandment of the Lord has started from heaven. That even all those heavenly hosts, the angels, the seraphim, the cherubims, the poor elder, the 24 elder, all of them worship God in heaven. That's why I told you, when you die, that's, that's the thing that we will see there. Okay, when you go to Five Star Hotel, when you open the door go in going inside, wow, it's a wonderful lobby, beautiful lobby, right? That is the same thing. When you enter heaven, you will see the lobby of heaven. And in the lobby of heaven, you will see the altar and the throne of God and all the heavenly hosts worshiping God. That is how it pictured in the book of Revelation. Kaya don't, don't be afraid to go to heaven, my brother and sisters. Yeah. All right? <laughs> don't be afraid. If you are sick, praise God. <laughs> Lord. All right? Okay, number two. God's decree is God's order to govern Israel. So from heaven, of course, God created the Garden of Eden. But because of the Garden of Eden, something happened. Now, I mean, in the Garden of Eden, something happened. And then here comes the nation of Israel. Israel is our model. <clears throat> okay? It is not the Garden of Eden. Because from the, from, from the nation of Israel, from the calling of Abraham, until the coming of Jesus Christ, this is how we should look at about the Word of God. Leviticus 19, 1920, I love this. Keep my decrees. It is a commandment of God to the Israelites. Keep my decrees. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two, kind, two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of materials. So what is this all about, God? Why do you ask us to do this? This is the question of Moses. Do not mate different kinds. So God said, don't take a dog and a cat mating them together to produce a hybrid. Okay, God doesn't like that. Okay, he doesn't want the crocodile and the rat mating together to produce a hybrid. All right? Okay, and we have a spiritual meaning of that. All right. And then in the field, God said, do not plant your corn and rice together in one field. Okay. Don't put the, the wheat and the barley together, the, the, the tubo, the, the sugar. sugar cane and, and the coconut together. God doesn't like that. Okay. This is literal with a spiritual meaning. Okay, and then number three, do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of materials. Okay, if it is polyester, let it be polyester. If it is cotton, let it be cotton. This is, but don't put them together. Why? Where is the logic there, God? Okay, why do you even care about our clothing? si <laughs> God. But that is true, because God wants us to be single-minded. He wants your heart to be single. He wants your eyes to be focused. Okay, he doesn't want you to mix up with the non-believers. He doesn't want you to disrespect the commandment of the Lord. 
He doesn't want you to disobey because if you will disobey, you will have trouble in your life. So that even in literal, you have to abide and you have to obey in small things. Because if you can prove this in small things, it means you can prove it in bigger things. Ang liit-liit na nga lang, di masunod. If you cannot obey a small things, you will find difficulties to obey big things. Okay, and even Jesus said, if you cannot even prove yourself on earth, how will God allow you to enter bigger things in heaven? Are you see? And it is a commandment of God. Deuteronomy 30:19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. It is a decree that the Lord, by the Lord, that, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Okay, it is just like obey my decree that both you and your descendants may live. So, as I have said, it is Israel. So, God governs his nation, which is the nation of Israel, by the series of commandments, the series of decree. And according to prophet Zechariah, but my words, 1 6, but my words and my decrees. So the word of God are also decrees of God. All right? I remember presidential decree 81. Well, what was that? We always think of that when we were young, Panaman. Okay, presidential decree, it is a decree from the president. Now this time, it is a decree from God, the king. God said, which I commanded my servants to the prophets. Okay, so these words, this decree, are commandment by the Lord to the prophets. Didn't they overtake your fathers? Okay, didn't they, over, didn't they overtake your father? In other words, I have given it to Moses, and then after several generations, it is still there. I never changed it. Okay, it is still there. It is just like when God made a commandment in heaven to praise the Lord, it is still there until today. Nobody changed it, and nobody can change it. Okay? Okay, in Psalm 89.31, if they break my statutes, okay, if they break my statutes or decree and do not keep my commandment, then I will punish their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with his stripes. Okay, so look what happened to the nation of Israel. They were scattered by God because of their disobedience. And Israel is our witness. The nation of Israel is our witness that those who obey God receive blessings from God. But those who refuse to obey God re receive punishment. Okay? Generally, they refuse to obey God because of the kings and the religious leaders. That's why religious leaders has great responsibility to the congregation and to the nation. And if there is something wrong, if there is bad things that's happening in a nation when it comes to religion, it is the religious leader who will be uh, punished by God. They are responsible on the day of judgment, the religious leaders. The Damasus and all the fake Bible teachers will be responsible on the day of judgment. And me too, if I am not teaching the word of God, there will be a curse in my life on the day of judgment. And you too, all of us, I'm not alone here. All right? So what is our job? Our job is to study the Word of God, to know that the Word of God is an active voice of God, and it is now inside my heart, okay? And King David is our sample, okay? King David became obedient to the Word of God. 
Okay, look, look at 1 Samuel 18, 14. David continued to succeed in everything he did. For the Lord was with him. When Saul recognized this, he became even more afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he was so successful at leading his troop into battle. So obedience to the decree of God will bring you to success. Okay, it will bring you to prosperity. Of course, prosperity is not only material things. Prosperity also includes spiritual things. Okay? According to, according to our uh, materials, Israel, okay, Israel and Judah love David. So if you will follow the word of God, God will love you, and the people around you will also love you. You Remember, my brothers and sisters, that our enemies are not people. Remember that, okay? The enemies of Russia and Ukraine, it is not Russia and Ukraine who are fighting. I believe it is between the power of good and evil. It is God who is in control and allows it, okay? If, it's some, if something happened in your life negatively, my brothers and sisters, you need to recognize that this is a power of good and evil. You have to know that. You need to understand that. Okay? Okay, now there is a sample here. Again, so as I have said, King David is our sample for good. But look at this, the sample of negative. Second Chronicles 36:15, And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messenger, rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So God was so compassionate to the people of Israel because Israel were sinning against the word of God. But instead of punishing them right away, God give them warning. Okay? He sent them the servant. He sent them the prophets because God doesn't want to punish his people. And that is also true to you and true to me. Okay? If you are sinning, all right, God will send someone to you. Okay, God will send someone to you because God will punish you whether you like it or not. God will punish you when you commit sinning, when you commit sins. Okay, he will punish you. Why? Because there is a decree already and he cannot change the decree anymore. He will punish you because you committed sin. But before he do that, he will send warnings. He will send the prophets, he will send the pastor, he will send the believers, he will even use the non-believers to remind you that you are committed and you are in covenant with our God. All right, and this is what happened to the nation of Israel. Before he sent the punishment to the nation of Israel, God sent first the prophets. God sent the warnings. Okay, and then look at verse 16. But they mock the messengers of God, despise his word, and scoff at his prophet until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Wow. It is just like the DNA of this man is really for hell. So I will just allow him to go to hell. This man has no more remedy because he is a man of evil. This is a man of, of immorality. Even though I tried to change him several times, he doesn't want to change. She doesn't want to change. So no more remedy. Let me kill this man and send him to hell. This is shocking, but this is a word of God. All right? Okay, and then look at 17. Now somebody will say, oh, the Lord is good, the Lord is good. Yes, the Lord is good. That's why he is sending the prophet. That's why he is reminding you because he doesn't want you to perish. Okay, but if you will abuse the kindness of God, like what happened to the nation of Israel, your days are numbered and he cannot change his, his uh, decree. 
it's already a decree. Unlike the government, there are many people who are lawmaker, and yet they are the lawbreaker. That is common in the world, right? Okay, you will make a law. You know, when I was in Kenya, they were asking me, Pastor, what can you say about the Christians in our, in our uh, uh, law? How do you say that? The lawmaker? The Congress. That's in your moment, brother. <laughs> the Congress. <laughs> Then what can you say about the Christian lawmaker who, who create this, this law to have multiple of wives? And they are Christians. I told them, well, I don't think these people are Christians. Okay? Because if we will be able to bind it and put it as a law, there will do no more sin because it's a law of the land according to this Christian lawmaker in Kenya. I told them, well, I don't know. But as for me and the Lord, well, it is against the law of God. Okay, it is against the law of God. So even though the law of the land is there, but if it contradicts the law of the Lord, it will not be validated by God in heaven. Even though you say that you have the law in the land. 17, therefore, he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with a sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man and virgin. On the aged or, on the, aged or the weak, he gave them all into his hands. All right, so you can see God didn't punish Israel literally. He used someone or he used a nation who is more wicked than the nation of Israel. Israel is wicked, but the nation of, the, the nation of Babylon is more wicked than the nation of Israel. And God used a wicked nation to punish Israel. And it might be true to us, my brothers and sisters. If you are sinning again, repeatedly, again and again, God will use someone who is more wicked than you to punish you and to kill you. Maybe the, the, the non-believers will be used by God. The people who do not know Jesus, he will be used by God, number one, to warn you. And if you will not change your ways, he will strike you. That's it. And this is what happened to the nation of Israel. Okay, God used a more wicked nation because God doesn't want to, 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 to punish them directly. Okay? The people whom you hated, I will use them to punish you. And after many, many years, Israel became a slave in Babylon. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. So don't wait, okay, until you realize that, oh, I'm in hell. And you cannot change and say, Lord, I'm sorry. While we have time, because it's a decree, okay? That's why last week we talked about let us align our words, our speeches, and our action with the perfect will of God. Let us align that because there will be a consequence. There will be a consequence. Okay, number three. God's prophetic decree covers the entire world. So nation of Israel, the nation of Israel is our model. So that the whole world will see how did the Lord okay, use the nation of Israel to propagate his word of God that he may be known in the whole world. Okay, so as I have said, the world is always part of the program of God in this world. God does not concentrate in Israel only. Okay, God used Israel as a model, as a servant of God, so that these Israelites will spread the word of God to the whole world. Now, did they do that? No. 
They didn't do that. That's why Jesus Christ stepped down on earth, and it was Jesus Christ who started again to spread the word of God. He started as one, it became 12, it became 70, it became 120, and then 3,000, 5,000, then multitudes and millions until now we have billions of billions of followers of Jesus Christ. All right? Now, there is a prophetic message, my brother and sisters, and this is our next message. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. It is a prophecy, okay? And according to this prophecy, the house of God will be put on the mountain, okay? And that mountain will be above all the mountains of the world. You know what is the meaning of this, right? If this is the temple in Jerusalem, in Mount Moriah, and that temple will be on top of all the mountains. What mountains do you know in the whole world? The Himalayas mountain, Mount Apo, Mount Nebo, Mount Hibuk Hibuk, whatever mountain is this. And Mount whatever mountain in, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Mount Everest, or in Mount... Uh, uh, what's that mountain that exploded in 1979? Eh? Pinatubo. Okay. Mount Vesuvius, the 79 in in Italy. So there are many, there are many mountains, and according to God, my mountain will be on top of all the mountains. So that the whole world will see that my mountains is the highest of all the mountains. And that will happen according to the prophet Isaiah in the future. And the meaning of this is that the word of God will be heard by many people. The word of God will be heard in all places. And the question is, are you willing to obey or listen to the word of God? In our generation, everybody believed that, yeah, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. They heard the name of Jesus Christ. But the problem is, they didn't obey the commandment of Jesus Christ. That's the problem. All right? Many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. It happened when Jesus Christ was crucified and when the word of God, of course, crucified and then died and resurrected and ascended to heaven. Now the word of God is now everywhere in the whole world. It started by Paul and Barnabas and then Peter and then all the Christians after one generation to another generation until today we do not stop preaching the word of God. We do not preach religion. We preach the word of God because religion is a decree of man. It is a man-made institution. It is a man-made ideology. But the word of God, the Bible, is a decree that originated from heaven. Where are you going? You are going to heaven. That's why you have to know what are the decrees originated from heaven. Okay? You cannot see the decree from hell, and you cannot see the decree from purgatory. It is right there from the throne of God, because there is no purgation place. Okay? Because the only place where the believers and the redeemed will stay forever is heaven. Okay, when we go to heaven, I believe God will tell us, this is the law of the Lord. Oh, you see, you study this while you were still in 31st, 21st, 31st Street, Astoria, 11106. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, you see, that's why we have to focus on the word of God. 
<laughs> you know, according to Mr. Putin, I read it long, long time ago. Every time he travels, he has the Bible. That's what he told. That's what he told in the interview, Time Magazine, when he became Man of the Year. Okay, he said, "I have the Bible always, and every time I sleep on my room, I put my Bible under my pillow so that God will protect me." Maybe 2003, 2004. I don't know. Long time ago, and until today, he said that the Russian Orthodox Church is the true Christian. And then all the churches in the Western are immoral churches because you allow uh, drink and wine and smoke and then the Bible together. There is no truth in Roman Catholic Protestantism because all of you are corrupt, unlike my Russian Orthodox. That's what he said. So this is his belief. He believed in ideology. Because if he believes the truth, he will not do that. Because you have to love your enemies. You know, I was uh, watching last night about the homily of one uh, preacher. He said, should we say, love your enemy or, or kill your enemies? Should we say, love your neighbors or kill your neighbors? <laughs> and then he added, should we say, love your in-law or kill your in-laws? Lagot, si Mike. All right. So it is always love, okay? And it's something that is very hard to do sometimes. Especially, well, you love. It's easy to love our siblings. It's easy to love our family. But when it comes to enemy, that is our struggle. All right, that is our struggle. And I believe that is also true. When Jesus Christ asked the Israelites, when Jesus Christ talked about the parable of the Samaritan, Okay, remember that the question of one lawyer, this is the question of one lawyer. Uh, he said, Master, how can I have eternal life? Jesus said, okay, this is how to have it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then the second, love your neighbor as yourself. And then the, the lawyer said, who is my neighbor? Jesus said, the Samaritan, they are your neighbor. And do you know that the Samaritan are their number one enemy? It is just like in modern time, the Palestinian is your number one enemy. Then love them. That's why Jesus Christ made an illustration. Because the Israelites are perfectly serving God 100%. But the second commandment, they miss it. Okay? They miss the second commandment. And it is a decree of God. That's why Jesus Christ tell them, it is not enough to serve the Lord. It is not enough to bring your offerings. It is not enough to give your tithes. You need also to demonstrate the love of God to your neighbors. And who is my neighbor? The Samaritan. Love them. But for them, the Samaritan is the worst race in the whole world, according to the Jewish Talmud. All right? The, 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 the Romans are even better than the Samaritans. <laughs> and yet Jesus Christ said, they are your neighbor. You have to love them. And that's the struggle of the Israelites. That's why no way. We cannot do that. All right. Job 22, 28. You will also decree a thing and it will be established to you. Light will shine on your ways. Isaiah 55, 10, I love this. My word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for, the purpose for which I sent it. So when God speaks, okay, when the Lord sent his command, it means it will accomplish his purpose. 
when God sent the word of God inside of you, what is the purpose of God? Okay, tell me, what is the purpose of God for sending his words inside of you? Though that you may make it in heaven. Okay? It is not only so that I can serve and I can preach. That's, yes, fine. But the real thing is that you may have a perfect relationship with God and you may reside in heaven in eternity. That is the purpose of God in sending his words to you. That's why your destiny, my brother and sisters, is heaven. Whether you like it or not, that is your destination. That is your final destiny. Even though Amori and Jesse are in love with each other now, but still your destination is right there in the heavenlies. Amen? Amen? It is always temporary, brother Greg and sister Joy. May laman na ba? It is always temporary. Our home on earth, this earth is our temporary residence. Amen? Okay, that's the reason why. That's why God said, it will not return to me void. It will not return to me empty. In other words, it will accomplish the purpose. If the purpose of God for you, for sending the word of God, it means he will accomplish it. That's why he will send problems to you. He will send a lot of trials and struggles if you are disobedient because he wants you to go and make it in heaven. Okay? So if there are problems, if there are misunderstandings, oh, always think, Lord, is this your way for me to be more refined? Yes. Yes. Okay? So three things that we can learn there. Okay, so the, the decree of God is from the mouth of God in Isaiah. It is from the Lord. And then it will accomplish. It will accomplish. So I know that one day I will be with God. Remember that, Pastor Mike. One day you will be the senior pastor. But not now. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> All right? Okay? So it will accomplish what God desires. His desire for me is to be in heaven. His desire for you is to be in heaven. And he will accomplish it. You will not be able to accomplish it. Hindi mo kaya. You cannot do it alone. You need God because it is a decree. Okay? Now my question here, are you in unison with God's plan? Are you united with the plan of the Lord? Or you have other plans? Okay? Do you have other plans? But for, for many people, they have other plans. Okay, look at that. Isaiah 10, 1. Who to those who decree unrighteous decrees? who write misfortune, which they have pre prescribed to rob the needy of justice and to take what is right from the poor of the people. And there are many lawyers and law lawmakers in our world, in the whole world. They are making unrighteous decrees for their own sake. They will make law, but actually for their own benefits. And God call it unrighteous decrees. All right? Matthew 7, 22, that's why Jesus said, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform miracles? 23, then I will tell them plainly, plainly I never knew you away from me, you evildoers, or you decrease breakers. All right? So the word of God is our security. Okay? As I have said, the word of God is eternal. It became human being. And then it enters into our hearts. Now it is a active word of God. It is now active inside of you. So allow the word of God to move as it directs you. As it directs you. And the last one, hallelujah, we're done. Number four, God's decree in our time. All right. 
in 2 Peter 3.3. 3, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own decrees or desires. Okay, there are unrighteous people that will twist the truth. They will call truth evil and evil truth. Or they will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world has first created. So everything is the same. People are preaching, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. But it's already 2,000 years ago. But until now, Jesus is not coming. So it means it is a myth. It is just a story. It is just a children's classic story. That's according to many mockers and scoffers of the word of God. And I believe you heard that from the school, from your work, from the hospital, from your boss. And accordingly, many Christian nations in the world are now atheists. Do you know that? Generally, in, in uh, Europe, 60% are atheists of the population. Israel is 60% atheist. China, 91% atheist. Vietnam, the same thing, about 80%. But Philippines, 92% religious. Wow, religious. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord for that. So there is no changes according to this passage. Okay, so let us not believe, let us not listen. But how about those auroras? How about those stars that, be, that bring glitters? Okay, okay, so now there is a reason according to, according to Peter. Okay, why did the Lord delay his return? In verse 8, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and thousand years as one day. Okay, so 1,000 years pala is only one day. So from the time of crusade to the time of Ferdi, it's 1,000 years. And it's only one day to God. So from the time of Magellan to present time, it's 500 years. So it's only 12 hours as far as God is concerned. <laughs> Half day lang yan. Half day ako ngayon. Half day ako. Half day. Okay, so that's why according to Peter, remember this, for God, so what is the meaning of this? Okay, and then look at verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count is slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, so the reason why God delayed his return, because he wants people to repent. He wants all people to repent because God doesn't want people to perish in hell. Because God loves hell. That's the same thing. Do you want your children? Okay, do you want your children to be in a messy life in all evil uh, things to happen in your, life, in your kids? Of course not. You want a good things, good life for your children. And that is the same thing with God. That's why God delayed and delayed and delayed his judgment. Because the second coming of Jesus Christ is a judgment period. Nothing can be changed with that. But there is a reason why he delayed his judgment. That's why the prophet in the Old Testament said, Do not rejoice on the day of the Lord, because the day of the Lord is cloud and thick darkness. Okay? So while it is still away from us, let us change our ways. Because this is a decree that nobody can change. In verse 17, you already knew these things. You already know these things. It is just like, alam you na to. You know it already. Okay, you heard it several times. So be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of the wicked people. Okay, those who put the unrighteous decrees. Okay, especially those who are following the fake news. Okay, and I believe God allows the fake news and the social media in our generation so that everyone's heart may be exposed. Everyone's heart may be exposed. You may look good to people, 
but the social media and your analytics will tell. And I believe God will check. Oh, this is the analytic of Ferdy. He followed this one. Oh, every day, every day he follows this. So you cannot change this. Even though you erase it, Ferdy, but it's already there, recorded in the records in heaven. Because this is your analytics. Okay, in social media. But you look good in the church on Sunday, Ferdy. All right. You praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, so be on guard then. You will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footings. 18, rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to him both now and forever. Amen. Do not stop seeking the will of God. Don't stop until you die. Don't stop. Amen. And this will be the way of the judgment of the Lord. God is not unfair. God has no favoritism. All right? In Psalm 119, 60, the entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgment endures forever. Psalm 119, 172, my tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Galatians 2, 6, 2, 6 God, shows per, God shows personal favoritism to no one for those who seem to no man for those who seem to be something added nothing to me so in other words if God will judge me or God will judge you or God will judge all the world it is righteous judgment you cannot say Lord you are you are unfair you cannot say that to God according to the Bible and this is my our last, and this is also our conclusion. I want you to make a decree to yourself. Make a decree unto yourself. And before doing that, let me do some beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm excited. In Hebrews 10.25, my brother and sisters, in Hebrews 10.25, make it your personal decree. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the Lord, his return is drawing near. Make a decree that Sunday is non-negotiable. It is a decree. Even though people will invite me to attend their good food, good this, good this, my priority is not neglect my Sunday. It is my decree unto myself. Do you say amen to that? Amen. Make a decree. It is a decree. And you will not regret it. Number two, Acts 2.42. They continue this fashion steadfastly in the another decree. Be sure that you maintain the four message here. Apostles doctrine, fellowship, breaking of the bread, prayers. It is my decree unto myself that I will not neglect my Sunday. At the same time, I will do the apostles' doctrine, uh, the, the fellowship, breaking of the bread, and prayers. Okay, I will not neglect it, and I will make it a decree. And the last thing is Matthew, uh, Mark 12, 29. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I will make a decree on myself that God is my priority. I will love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. But I will not ignore my neighbor as well. All right? So you can see here, these are decrees that you should impose to whom? To others? To yourself. To yourself. Because if you will do this, someday you will say, praise God, I'm here in heaven. Okay? Who wants to go to heaven? Not now. Okay? Not now. Okay? All right. So praise God for that wonderful message.